Hello again, friends and lovers, and welcome to another edition of Jim Cornette's drive Through right here, wherever it is that you find us each and every week. I am the great Brian Last, your host. Usually I ask your questions to the man who answers them, the leader of the cult of Cornette, the exalted one of the cult of Cornette, Mr. Jim Cornette, but I guess right here at the top of the show, there have been some statements made about Mr. Jim Cornette in the last week, so without any further ado, the star of the drive through Jim Cornette. Oh, now I'm the star. You're always have the I star. Gotta, have I got to be in everything? If this was 1992, they'd have me in the steroid scandal. For fuck's sake. And, and by the way, you might be able to hear the thunder behind me. The thunder and light, it may add even more gravitas to our statements today as the thunder happens and rolls over it. This is the crowning achievement of my career, great Brian Last. I have just realized this, that this is the crowning achievement of my career, that I am a person with this much heat, this this many people around the world genuinely despise me. Now in the 80s, they did, because they didn't know we were working. And some of them knew but didn't care, because they still hated me. And that was fulfilling. But in a world where everybody is supposed to be smart, and by the time the program's over with today, folks, we're going to find out that that's certainly not true. In a world where everybody is supposed to be smart, Brian Last, I have succeeded in being the only person in the remnants of what's left of the wrestling business that has legitimate, despicable, despising, killing heat. If anything bad can be wished upon me or happen to me. They want it. If if I can be involved in any spurious scandal or if I can be lumped into any wave of change of cancel, oh, the cornet's got to be figuring it is some kind of way. Let's see how we can put him in this. I have done so in a world of smart people where everybody else is, oh, we love you. They fight forever. This is awesome. They really hate you. Re- you hate me. You really hate me. Now I know how Sally Field felt at the Oscars. And I know a lot of people out there right now are saying, Jim Cornette is not going to take this seriously. Fuck no, I'm not. Are you out of your fucking mind? As we go into excruciating and minute detail on exactly why I'm not uh, today here on this episode. I'm just, I'm gratified, Brian, that the crowning achievement of my career is nearly 40 years after I first started, I'm the only person left in what's left of the wrestling business that people legitimately hate. That's saying something. That's saying something. And like you said, A lot of people are probably saying he's not taking this very seriously right now. There are a lot of things happening in the world of wrestling, and you got swept into it (laughs) last week on Twitter. Well, and and actually, for a lot of, because here's the thing, a lot of the people that listen to our program, since the numbers have grown so dramatically over the last short time, few years, uh, a lot of people don't live their lives on Twitter and aren't wrapped up in this ridiculous outlaw wrestling movement and might not even know this. So let's preface this top of the program. I'm, Brian, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to uh, relay the information to the folks on exactly the, the statements and the accusations that were made against me and Stacy, the beautiful queen of Castle Cornette, uh, on, on Twitter uh, a few days ago. Basically, somebody on some guy on Twitter, was that a James Gregory line? Some guy, some guy on Twitter alleges that Stacy and I have engaged in a concerted effort over the last some 20 years to recruit sex slaves and disciples from the OVW roster and uh, threatened. I threatened to withhold contracts or pushes and ruin their careers unless they submitted to Stacy's carnal desires. Have I got it right so far? I believe that is the crux of what has been alleged. The cru- the crux or the crotch of the matter. <laughs> um this accusation was made furthermore 
by a guy on Twitter who says that he was an aspiring wrestling trainee in 2017. So it would be three years ago. Um, <clears throat> when when they got a phrase now, groom, when Stacy tried to groom him to somehow come under her spell, uh, and though he says he was able to escape us, we ruined a good friend of his life or career or whatever by tormenting him, and he... And this guy just couldn't go on any longer without speaking out, even though he was scared and shaking as he revealed this information. He actually typed that. I'm shaking as I type this. But he had to do it. And on, correct me when I go astray here, Brian, <clears throat> on the say-so of basically a random guy on Twitter with a five Twitter page story and some screenshots we'll get to every news outlet south of the New York times says, Holy shit. And all of the same outlaw wrestling fans with 120 Twitter accounts each. Then in October, when I was grand dragon of KKK and in December, when I tried to systematically deny women the right to fucking, I don't know what the fuck I hated women. I was against babies in March and this time I'm trending for shit that somebody else has said about me that they actually picked up and ran with. And this became a thing. <clears throat> so, that, yeah, there's the thunder. So, I, and honestly, I hate to blow the big, one of the big reveals early, but I got to blow one because it helps the rest of the story if we blow one of the big reveals early. Usually it's the Perry Mason moment, right? But I did it at the end of the show in the courtroom. I got I got one one reveal I got to do at the top of the program. It puts things in better context. The aspiring trainee that says Stacy tried to groom him. This was in 2017. Before he managed to escape, right? Somehow her clutches or get away is in actuality, Brian, a guy in his late 30s currently living in Billings, Montana. I'm not making this up. I double dare somebody to challenge me on these details. <clears throat> and if you're doing some math, that means that this fucking fresh faced, innocent trainee who came under the wiles of a wicked, wicked city woman would have been almost 35 years old. So maybe that's why his re fucking wrestling career apparently has not worked out well because nobody from Google on down could identify this human being as an actual professional wrestler. He may have been to wrestling school or in some way perpetrated something in a ring. He did apparently train in the OVW system at some point around 2017. And that's the only other wrestling connection that I've been able to find is that one of his social media accounts, his profile picture is a meet and greet pose with Sammy Callahan. That's very interesting. And but before we talk about <clears throat> the way that he's addressed me and, and my family, uh, there is, I don't hope you don't know this, Brian. You'd be really scary if you did, but I found it out. This same guy from Billings, Montana, there's a pro wrestler who I obviously will not name, a male who sent photos of himself to a person he knew that was wanting them and looking forward to receiving them. But some way or another, this guy has ended up with them. And it has been alleged to make noise like he wants to show these pictures and tell people that this guy just sends them out or whatever or sully his reputation in some way. So the, the, maybe if I didn't work out, he had a backup plan. That's what I'm saying. Wait, I don't... I don't understand exactly what you are saying. What I'm saying is that a, a guy in the wrestling business who sent pictures to a person who wanted them, well, some way or another, this guy has ended up with those pictures. So you're saying beyond the screen caps of messages, which you'll, you said you'll talk about, there's a different person in wrestling who's Yes, photos... this guy's got somebody else's shit in wrestling that he don't want him to have and don't know how that, that he got. So he's, uh, there's, 
obviously he's he's starting a career here. But anyway, I don't want to go into that any further because it's not my place. But this other guy is probably going to go into this further if anything else happens. Anyway, <clears throat> but we now we know that this guy somehow can get people's stuff. But anyway, I'll tell you how he got some of this other stuff in a second. The point is, let's go through this bit by bit in, as I mentioned, excruciating detail. As far as I'm concerned in this, I said, well, what's everybody mad at me about here? Well, you withheld employment or withheld contracts or gave same or applied favor or fear to people's employment in exchange for them having to somehow engage with you or your wife and gratify you people in these, in these horrible ways. This is the bone of, of that contention, right? Well, in OVW, I was the booker, and obviously, well, we've gone into my credentials in OVW from 1999 till 2005, when I was sideways then with the WWE program and, and ceased my affiliation as far as being the booker, the announcer, or any part of the creative or developmental program. I divested myself of my ownership in 2007. But from 99 to, two, to 05, Brian, we had a pretty good record of turning out talent from that point, just not to pat myself on the back or toot my own horn, but toot toot. Um, the universal consensus at the time, and you can, you can vouch for this or disagree if you want, if anybody's out there screaming this and, and waving torches in the air, did we not have the reputation for featuring all of the best talent in the best way on OVW television or pretty much any other place in the business. I think you could say that. Yeah. Um, we, uh, according to what everybody, including the WWE who was overseeing the developmental program, part of it at that time, um, I pushed all the people that I should have and half the people I shouldn't have. Uh, but everybody got a shot <clears throat> and it was not given out on any fears or favors for anything. And it's never been said before in the 15 years since. The only problem I had when, came to when it came to pushing talent was when they were telling me to push the talent that had never been in front of an audience before. That got a little unpalatable. But that had nothing to do with the accusations of which we speak. Uh, you don't think that these guys who became the most powerful wrestlers in the largest promotion in the world, especially during a period of time where John Laurinaitis wanted to get rid of me, get me out of the way here at OVW, wouldn't have given him some help, wouldn't have said, you know, okay, hey, you know, I really don't like that this went on or so-and-so. After I was gone, when I wouldn't have had any influence, you don't think somebody went up and say, hey, thank you, good job for doing that because of this, or any other complaint, any complaint about the way that I interacted with the guys, except professionally when I was screaming at them about their fucking crummy matches, was ever the subject of any complaint. This wouldn't have come up by now as many fucking... Horrible things. Um, not one person that I ever supposedly made that offer to at that time ever complained privately, publicly, stated it to anybody, etc. So then I'm gone from OVW. And then in 2010, I return, and here's why. It was the, the fall, oct October, I believe. But Danny Davis called me. He had lost his affiliations. He had no developmental deal with anybody. The talent was down. The business was down. He was going through a rough spot. He had let some of the other guys run the business for a while. It had not gone well. He said, my TV's the shits. Can you just, can you maybe write the TV? Give me some ideas for the TV, whatever. I went and talked to him and said, I'll, I'll write the TV. Because this is when we were in the process. I was with Ring of Honor. We were in the process of working on or just starting into the process of, I can't remember the exact timeline, the uh, Sinclair purchase. But I was home a lot. So I agreed to write the television that they taped on Wednesday nights and produce it, try to lay it out, help the guys. One night a week, I was writing the TV and trying to 
show the guys, help the guys, teach the guys how to do these things on television. To say that I would have withheld a push from anybody at this point is ridiculous since there weren't any contracts for anybody because there was no affiliation. Nobody was actually getting paid at this time. It was a straight wrestling school. There were only about four guys, to be quite honest, on the roster being charitable that would have ever been able to get a contract with anybody. And I pushed them to the moon and wrote the TV around them because the rest of the guys, while well-meaning and hardworking, were the drizzling shits. And we didn't even, I didn't even book the house shows because at that point, everybody had a real job and Danny wasn't sure who would show up on a Saturday night at a spot show. So they just booked the fucking card when they got there. So the idea that there was anything to withhold or reward anybody with is you people don't know how the fucking wrestling business works. Anyway, so I did the favor until, what was it the Sinclair purchase happened? April or first part of May, whatever. At that point, 2011, I didn't have time and I couldn't write the TV anymore, but I'd worked with a couple of the guys. I won't mention anybody's name, slander anybody at this point, but a couple of the guys that were Danny's senior guys that had been around for a while and knew how the equipment worked and, and wrestled and did production and, and they got the hang of formats and blah, blah, blah. And I quietly handed it off. I didn't have any fucking retirement ceremony. I went to do the Ring of Honor thing. And I think they kept using my name as the matchmaker, even though I wasn't there until they got their TNA deal. At that point, Danny had also restructured some things with the business and the way they ran the shows and et cetera. He had a few, a little more income coming in. So I wasn't leaving him in a lurch, but it wasn't a paid position to begin with. Every once in a while, he'd force a check or fucking dinner on me. <clears throat> so that doesn't sound like a high pressure environment where, Hey, come bone my wife, or I'm going to fucking take this goddamn giant opportunity away from you might be existing at that point. Does it to you, Brian? It does not. No. All right. That was my last creative position in Ohio Valley wrestling. I went back for about six weeks. I think it lasted in 2015. Cause I had found a sponsor down in Knoxville Guy with the TV station, the Fox affiliate, they got the OVW TV show on the air down there. It was an extra little revenue stream for Danny. I, as I said, I don't remember that it lasted longer than six or eight weeks. But at that point in time, I went and did a couple of TVs as a appearance and did one of their Saturday night house shows as a special deal so I could work with Danny again. And I haven't been in OVW in five years. And I'm just going to, I don't mean to offend Anybody here in town when I say this, but if anybody thinks that in the last 10 fucking years that I have paid any attention to Ohio Valley Wrestling or anybody working there or what they're doing or who they're doing it with or anybody past that my old friend Danny Davis sold it to fucking Al Snow two years ago and retired to Florida, you are out of your fucking minds. So that part's fucking ridiculous. And the, here's another thing that once again, this would sound good to all the people on Twitter and a fucking wrestling school dropout or some fucking Markish idiot that doesn't know how the wrestling business works. But let me, let me explain something else to you, Ricky, Lucy. This guy also said that I would bury or report guys to the commissioner here in Kentucky if they wouldn't play footsie with us and and do and satisfy their whims or whatever, right? You see that part? Yeah. And this part of this relates to it, we'll get to it. Part of it relates to the old Facebook, the old fucking Facebook in the middle of the night. But I understand once again why an idiot would say this, but think about this for a second. I'm going to go to as we've talked about for so many years, the representative of the Kentucky State Athletic Commission, the one of the most stringent athletic commissions in the country, it is a government agency, and he then, by extension of logic of that, is a government official, you fucking Twitter twits. And I'm going to ask him, hey, do me some favors here, because these guys ain't playing along. It would legitimately, in the state of Kentucky, it's not like the, they're actually telling the old stories of the old days where you slip the fucking commissioner a 20 and he sticks in his hat and chomps on his cigar and goes out for a smoke when you slip the blade in back in Shreveport. 
It would be, in, in the days of social media and video, it would be a crime for him, not me, but him, to go along with anything that I would propose in that direction. That would be him being malfeasant at his job, and that would be him. You think the fucking commissioner is going to commit a crime for me so me or my wife, either one, could get laid? I have asked him I, on a couple of occasions. There's been over the years that that I've promoted in the state of Kentucky. Oh, God, please don't test this guy till after the show, or please don't suspend this guy because he doesn't have his license or whatever because it's going to fuck up my program, right? And he would always be very kind, very polite, when he'd turn around and say, well, I wish I could, but I can't because that's the rules. And there would go whatever the fuck, right? Um... I have I can make this statement while we're making declarative statements. I have never asked the commissioner or representative of the commission of the state of Kentucky to test, fine, suspend, harass, cuss out, or in other way mistreat anybody or do any favors for anybody in OVW or any other company hear all these outlaws here that you saw they they call a commission and bury us. I've applauded him a few times finding or suspending some of these promotions, but I've never asked him to do it. And if it ever came to needing a sworn statement from a government official to that fact, he would be more than happy to provide one. And while I'm making the explicit denials that everybody has, I've, I've seen a lot of people making a lot of conditional denials and or explanations, but I'm, I'm just sticking with the explicit category. What do they call it? Categorical. I'm going with that stuff. I have never offered any wrestler, male or female, preferential treatment, a job, a contract, a push, or anything else related to their employment or uh, threatened the same or threatened or the opposite if they would or would not engage in ribald relations with me or my wife. No, uh, no quid pro quo, no, no tit for tat, as they say in some of these cases. And also, Brian, I want you to, I made a list. Stop me if... if when I get to the end of it, if I haven't covered anything, because I made a list of all of the denials that I need to make to make everybody happy, according to what I've seen on the internet past several days with everybody else, right? I've um, No female wrestler that I ever worked with in Ohio Valley Wrestling or anywhere else, my recollection, has ever said that I talked to them or treated them improperly, except when critiquing their matches or performance of same, uh, but treated them improperly or with any personal or uh, language or actions of that description. I have not been involved with anyone under legal age. I have, I have not physically abused anybody. Well, okay, I physically abused some men by the strict definition of that term, I've hit a lot of men over the head with the fucking tennis racket. Let me try this again. How should I say this? I've, well, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be categorical here and I can't make that blanket statement when I say anybody, cause I've physically abused a lot of fucking men, but not in a sexual manner, but not in a sexual way. Okay. There's categorical. I've not physically abused any men in a sexual way. And I haven't phys physically abused any women. I didn't think I even ever tatered. Any of the girls I worked with, well, Baby Doll tell you I did one time, but that was her fault. I have never sent inappropriate pics, texts, sexts, or whatever to anybody because I've never sent a goddamn text to anybody. I've never done that on Facebook for the same reason. I have never slept in the same bed with a woman and not had sex with them, and it wasn't a surprise to anybody that was involved with it when it happened. And I didn't know that people just did that like it was the fucking Brady Bunch. Oh, come on over, hang out, let's have a sleepover. We're all, we're grown adults, but we're not gonna, I don't fucking understand. 
Um, I, I, nobody that I've ever known in the biblical sense has been forced or, co or coerced in any way to be there and all seemed happy to take part and happy when it was over with. You can take that as you will. Um, I'm not being accused of cheating by my spouse or significant other because whenever that's happened, she's either known about it or been there when it took place. But my own wife is not mad at me for anything. So apparently that just leaves when you take all those other things out. Fun? Is it, does it, if that's what you're left over with is just fun? Day off, personal time amongst friends? Fun? Isn't everybody supposed to have their fun? You know, I bet there's about five or six motherfuckers. I shouldn't even use a vulgar term. There's about five or six individuals on the AEW roster. I could question them having fun if there was a fucking burrow from Monterey involved and I'd get fucking hell and damnation sent down on top of me. Isn't that the whole idea of all of these woke people? That everybody's supposed to be allowed to have their fun? I can't have my fun. Stacy can't have her fun. You can't have fun anymore. Isn't fun what it's all about, Brian? Again, to go back to the issue, and I'm trying to read between the lines and actually read the actual lines that you're saying here, that having fun, as, as you're putting it, is okay as long as it's not attached to a push or being blackballed or a major yes. run in OVW. Yeah. Or... <laughs> or the... Oh, wait a minute. Hey, if, if you'll come over and get in a hot tub with us, then we'll, we'll let you drive the ring truck. What the fuck? That's another thing. I, I've become Hugh Hefner. I've become Hugh Hefner hot tub parties. What the... I... <laughs> I'm seriously, and all, I, I ain't joking with you. I, I, I'm, you know, and I, we have had from the professionals in the wrestling industry that have been in our hot tub that we have had for 15 years, I'd say five, six tops. And I don't remember any of them actually be a, being contracted at the time with any major organizations. But um, anyway, and that that's what I'm saying. If you take out the manipulating people's jobs accusation, which we've just basically drawn and quartered, as they say, and illustrated was fucking caca. What you've got left is uh, I've been charged with having an interesting sex life. That is a lot of what I've noticed on social media the last few days is there is a very, very small group of people that think that you legitimately held someone back because they wouldn't participate in sexual activities with your wife but then there's a lot of other people who are the term i've seen used is kink shaming you for not having a sexual life that i guess is the same as theirs well but besides that uh, they've taken and that and run with it also um let's face it if it it wouldn't be physically possible for my sex life to have been as good as the internet has said it was over the last three days <laughs> or Stacy's either one. And it's fucking ridiculous. I, I, as I said, I wish it had been that varied and exciting. Well, you know, as I said, in the last 15 years, we've had five or six people in the hot tub from the wrestling business. There's never been a ton more in there. There's been a few people in the hot tub, but the point is it, 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 I got the short end on the internet, by the way. Stacy was the one depicted as having all the fun, and I got another. Over 20 years, it's worked out a, 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 approximately even. But the point is, seriously, folks, you're going to take the fucking... The, you're going to take this and run with it and believe something like that. And then if, if it can't be that it's bad about me from a business standpoint, the professional accusations aren't true. And that was how it hurt me the worst. Cause of course I'm, you know, me, I don't have human feelings and I don't give a shit what people say, but I was indignant that people would say that I'd fucking monkeyed with my job or the business or other people's jobs. 
but uh, the, the, then it becomes, oh my God, they were, they're crazed sex maniacs. And that's the thing. I'll talk about this in a second, but folks, I know some of the Louisville area wrestling marks grew up thinking that Stacy led an evil band of satanic sex cultists that were her disciples and fucking worshipped evil, but she just played one on television. But back to, back to Billings' tweet. So those are the charges on me. We've dismissed that shit. The proof of this two-decade-long conspiracy of us abusing people and ruining their lives and careers and just having complete impunity about it. Nobody's ever said anything about it up till now because goddamn everybody knows that I would fucking tell Vince to fire them all. Boils down to some stuff off of Facebook and a picture of Stacy's ass. And I swear to God, somebody actually said this. How can this not be true? He's got a picture of her ass. I, we're not dealing with adults anymore. I don't mean to offend anybody's delicate sensibilities out there in podcast land, but pictures of Stacy's ass are not uncommon. <laughs> She's proud of it, and rightfully so. I have taken hundreds of pictures of that ass over the years in many different locations. She doesn't fucking just send them out unsolicited like, here, let me give her one of those blanket marketing texts. Here's my ass. But if the conversation veers in that direction, there's quite a few of them in existence. <clears throat> so that's not a big deal. And that leaves the Facebook internet conversation, whatever. I use the term Facebook because that's what all these internet chats are to me. So pardon me if I'm not technically correct, but he, there, this guy, and at first, this is why we were puzzled and didn't even understand what we were looking at for a minute because this guy, he claims it was a chat with him. Now we know he has other people's stuff, uh, but whoever the fuck <clears throat> besides uh, some l little mild naughty talk and you know which i guess now is what the the kids do these days uh, on text or whatever where we used to use the phone and actually have to pay long distance charges talk dirty on the phone but besides the naughty talk in the picture um and very mild by the way he's got stace cutting a promo on what she's going to do to somebody that she's pissed at yes i know it runs in the family and when we first saw the, first of all, she saw it. She's what the fuck? I don't know who this fucking guy is. I don't remember ever talking to him because by the way, bear in mind, it helps to the, to know the story that neither one of us to this day have ever seen this guy in person before uh, or know that we would be speaking to him if we couldn't pick him out of a police lineup. But anyway, and the way that the whole thing was fucking presented was odd anyway, because you saw it, Brian, whether the, the cut and paste or one or more conversations with some stuff made sense, didn't in the context of it, was something put together. And I saw her new picture, and I was like, well, fuck, the picture's only been up a week and a half. This can't be old. And then everybody on the Internet says, well, you fucking idiot. You know how this works. I said, well, of course I don't. <laughs> but anyway, yes, this is some stuff somewhere that Stacy a few years ago said in some context to somebody or parts thereof. I know that's fucking narrowing it down, but that's the best I can do. But it looks to us like this guy or whoever he got this from got in a conversation with Stacy on fucking Facebook, potentially presented himself as an acquaintance of, or in the, social orbit of the person that she was pissed off at at the time and she cut of one page or whatever why i ought a fucking cornet promo on what she was going to do to him at about three o'clock in the morning after a couple of cocktails so there you go now i'm not sure if that's illegal <laughs> <clears throat> and 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 not all of it was spelled right, so the grammar police will be out. But seriously, this is the guy. And here's another one of the big reveals. I, I hate to spoil everything. Also, at one time, this person that she was pissed at, that she was talking about badly, 
was the guy that the fellow over in Billings, that middle-aged fucking wrestling school flunk out in Billings, said is the close friend of his that confided this dark secret in him that told him how he was able to escape with his life and in this uh, horrible situation, blah, 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 right? He's the, the, he's the friend, the guy she was pissed at, shit-talking. Apparently, Billings didn't know the heat was off. And heat has been off for a while because I talked to the fucking guy that she was cutting a promo on about it. And his response was, how the fuck did I get involved in this? This guy is not my friend. I have never had a conversation with him, much less confided deep, dark secrets about him, about you. I've never had a conversation with him where I mentioned yours and Stacy's names. I saw him around OVW a few years back, like a hundred other people. The close friend ain't mad and can't figure out how he's gotten this fucking dramaticness because his, his life has, has uh, continued on after all this horrible shit that was going to be done to him. Right there at that point in time at three o'clock in the morning where Stacy fucking was mad at him on the keyboard after she'd had a couple of cocktails. Apparently all those things didn't take place. Anyway, he also says, since everybody's testifying for the record that he has no complaint, gripe, grievance, bone to pick, or any other synonym therein with either one of us, me or Stacy, that he wishes to air publicly or privately. Except what the fuck? And who's the guy in Billings? And uh, the person that we were talking about that just said he has no problem also has never been a person who's been under any kind of contract, has had and ha- continues to have a normal job and is involved in wrestling for the love of the game, not somebody that I'm sabotaging or could sabotage their fucking career. (sighs) So obviously he's been groomed. He's been groomed and uh, by manscaped. (laughs) And uh, so Billings has concocted this backstory and made these accusations and gotten all these people to buy this story because here's here's the evidence. Stacy and I are known to have a little fun now and then, whether separately or together. She sent somebody a picture of her ass, and she cut a promo about somebody at 3 o'clock in the morning on Facebook after a couple of cocktails. Seriously. So now, and oh, and, and, and his corroboration is a few fringe wrestling personalities in the Louisville area that are pissed the fuck off that nobody pays attention to them. And the people that retweet it are everybody else that already hated me to begin with because they just want to go with it. <clears throat> but if, if it, as far as the late night Facebooking, and by the way, I've got people uh, come to my website, order the same shit three times in a row at four o'clock in the morning drunk. And they're surprised uh, the next day or two when I send their money back because they don't remember it to fucking begin with. So has anybody else out, ever out there ever said any shit about somebody they were pissed at to somebody else on Facebook at three o'clock in the morning after a couple of cocktails. But if my five foot two 42-year-old at the time wife said something on Facebook that offended or traumatized a mid-30s grown adult wrestling trainee or his morals were perpetrated and offended by some kind of candid photography, I, I, I just feel horrible. But how can you groom someone or have them escape your clutches when once again, neither one of this of, of us to this day have ever met or laid eyes on this guy. And his fucking complaint was written like a lifetime movie. 
like one of these confessionals that people want to get on the phone, which I think a lot of people want to get a lot of shit on the internet, which is all at the root of this. Uh, but my hands are shaking. Why was his hand shaking? Because Louisville's a long fucking way from Billings, Montana. You should have felt safe once you got back there, kid. So, as you know, as I said, Stacy wasn't really the leader of the cult of disciples. And for all you people who said that she ought to be banned from wrestling, she hasn't been involved in wrestling in 15 fucking years. I swear to God, there were people out there, people like you should be run out of wrestling. Out of what the, what the fuck? That's like saying goddamn George Bush Sr. should be run out of office. And, and you know, and, and that's the point here. Well, I don't give, go ahead, what? Well, I was going to say, you brought up that there are some people, I guess, around the Louisville wrestling scene who have corroborated him. I saw a couple of tweets from a couple of guys. Uh, one of them, I think, was Michael Hayes. Well, yeah, but, oh, but wait a minute. There, 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 there's two guys, but it's actually, it's one guy with two names. And I'd, I'm not even going to, Michael Hayes, and he's a veteran, and, and he's had issues, and I don't even want to... Bring him in this or malign this. I don't know why he's hopping on this, but but the other guy that says he was an OVW champion too was he changed his name to a different Mike something. He's working as a different Mike now. Mike, I I can't remember. Wait, but the point the, one, it's the same guy. It's the same guy. Yeah, one guy he, he changed his name so he gets two votes as a corroborator. <laughs> Come um, on. I'm not, I'm, you, you think I'm fucking making, I had to look and find the fucking other Mike guy. I Googled him. I said, that's the same fucking guy. He just, he changed his name. He's not with OVW. You haven't been with OVW and I don't know how long he said I, history of issues, which I don't care to fucking go into. Uh, but the point is some people that need some fucking attention because everybody wants to fucking, I guess, get on the fucking bandwagon. And, and, you know, it, like I said, I, for me, fuck you. I don't care. And when I say fuck you out there, you people, I'm not talking about the people that are listening actually to this program now because they know better because they're the smart ones, but the people that aren't listening, that only get the sound bites and have already determined what they want to fucking do. You people can all fuck yourself, but here's why I don't care about me. I'm used to heat. I could give a shit after 40 years, death threats, insults, taunts, personal attacks, physical attacks. I'm, and I'm after 40 years, I'm more over than ever just by being myself. But I don't care because while I'm sitting here, if I turn this fucking computer off and I go sit on my couch and either read a book or watch television, the rest of the world doesn't exist. And as I said, I've been practicing social distancing for years, but here is my issue. Even though I consider it a crowning achievement to derive pleasure from your intense hatred, <clears throat> I'm making myself a public figure. And what I say, I say, okay, fine. I don't like being lied about. But all of the people who have hopped on this in this whole bandwagon and this whole wave, this whole movement, everything that everybody's talking about, why I'm one of the people that should be excised and gotten rid of and fucking banished is to speak up. Get the hate out. Drive the bullying out. Stop the discrimination. Stop these assaults. Make it safe. What? Why would all these people be allowed to do these things? Never more, never more. You know what you did in that in that name, in, in that in that image? You know what all of you that want to get all that hate and all that bullying out? All that discrimination, all that assault, all that persecution, making people feel horrible. You attacked, bullied, and slandered a middle-aged housewife. She'll hate me for saying that. A middle-aged housewife that's not on television, not a public person, not on a podcast, hadn't been involved in wrestling in 15 fucking years. Because you can't get me 
because they can't figure out a way to make me quit something. They can't figure out a way to hurt my feelings. They can't figure out a way to shut me up. Or they just hate me in general and want to fuck with me. You attack, bully, and slander somebody that had nothing to do with this except by sending a fucking angry promo on Facebook at 3 a.m. in the morning after a couple of cocktails. They talked about her appearance and her weight. They called her every kind of name and slut and whore. Drawing paintings, pictures, retweeting it, making every kind of joke. She's sitting down there doing an oil painting of her dog, and on the internet, people are calling her a predator. Like she preyed on this fucking mid-30s asshole from Billings, Montana. Can you imagine? <clears throat> Brian, if, if, if you had to, like, like these protests and the votes and the marches and, and come out and speak your piece and attach your name to it, can you imagine if they had to sign up and attach their names to that program? If they had to sign up for that and everybody publicly know, okay, we're in favor of this. There's a fucking guy that we, we hate this guy and we can't fucking get him. And we can't fucking fuck with him. But here's a great fucking story. Let's slander his wife. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the mission statement here? What we're going to do is we're going to engage in a Twitter campaign to hound and bully and slander and call every vulgar and offensive name in the book this middle aged housewife. It, it's, a, it's a great time to do it, folks. It's a great time to do it. Let's get on this bandwagon because after all, her father just passed away less than a year ago and this weekend is Father's Day. So she'll be in a real good mood and I'm, we're, we sure said, you know, she can't travel coast to coast because of the pandemic. So she hadn't seen her mother who's had health issues, hadn't seen her since last year. So this would be a great family weekend that we can call her the fucking whore of Babylon on the internet in the interest of stopping bullying and getting rid of these horrible people like her husband. May, hey, here's an idea. If we really jump on her hard enough, maybe she'll hurt herself. That would show him we could get even with Cornette if we made his wife hurt herself. At least we can make her run off and sit in the dark in the bedroom and cry for about three hours straight is why the fuck are all these people saying this shit about me? On this weekend, that that's going to make Cornette miserable. That's what would happen there. I bet you we could really get even with that motherfucker. You fucking people are just as bad and disgusting and sick in the fucking head as the fucking shit you're trying to fix. And once again, I say you people, meaning not the people that are listening to this show, but the people that ought to be listening to it. That Hana Kimura, everybody was all up in arms about all the way that she was talked about. I guarantee you the worst message that she got, Stacy got 500 of them worse and more of them. And there was a bunch of fucking people upset about, oh, how could they say these things and make this poor girl do that? They're the ones that turned around and do the same thing. If Stacy had killed herself, would it still be bad, Brian? Would it still be bad or would it be okay because I would get what I deserve? I'm just wondering, it, it, if she killed herself, it wouldn't count because a guy from Billings said that she was a horrible person too, and that way we can get even with Cornette. Fuck you. And, and, he, and here, this part may be fucking worse. This part may be a little fucking worse than that. <laughs> what can you say, Jim Cornette? Could a human being do to be lower, to be slimier, to be more disgusting, to be a fucking disease-ridden amoeba that lives in a fucking subcellar of a sewer in a septic tank under a sewage plant than something like that to, to a, a housewife, not a public figure? Well, right before all this shit went on, flared up on the Twitter machine. Bobby Fulton, one of the nicest guys in the business, 
actually tweeted, tweeted or retweeted a picture of me and him that somebody took here a few years ago when he came down to have dinner with me. And he tweeted that out and said some nice things about me, and I responded with some nice things about him. And then immediately, all this thing blows up on Twitter. And they dogpiled his Twitter. Dogpiled his Twitter. Did you know about this? Did you do this? Blah, 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 over and over, and blah, 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 blah. So what about the mission statement on signing up for that campaign, ladies and gentlemen? Here, we're going to make positive change in the wrestling business and get rid of these mean, evil, disgusting people that touch all these people in their pretty parts and do all these other horrible things to people. And one of the ways that we're going to celebrate and do it is we're going to harass and bully. After we harass and slander and bully this guy's wife to tears, Let's then go harass and clog up the Twitter of a 60-year-old fucking cancer patient just because he happens to be his friend. Two months of chemotherapy and radiation that Bobby Fulton has to go through, he tweets a nice picture of a guy he's known for 40 years, and that person says something back, and these ass wipes and imbeciles have to jump on his Twitter and clog it up with vulgar shit. The only way that he has now, since he can't go out because his immune system is shot, and there's no events anyway, the only way he has to communicate with people is clogged up with vulgar shit about his friends. And he's like me. He's an old man. I think his son, if I am correct, tweets for him to begin with. So it's a laborious process of relaying messages and fucking dictating if he wants to to begin with or so-and-so dad said this and blah 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 and they've got to look at this shit because you people are so wrapped up in what a rotten person that i am that this is what has now become acceptable is bullying middle-aged housewives to tears and harassing 60 year old cancer patients to enforce decency in fucking wrestling fuck you people in all complete sincere honesty fuck you to death you disgust me you are worse and you show yourself to be worse than all the people you try to fucking take up for and when all your goddamn heroes all the people who were lying to you all along apparently although i'm not going to comment on anybody else's accusations or cases until they actually themselves say yes i did this shit I don't care if it's with a sheep, a goat, or what the fuck. Because now you never do know. But a lot of people have been telling you that they weren't assholes for a long time. You know how to spot an asshole? He's the one that tells you he's not. I've admitted being an asshole from day one. But I'm an asshole that's honest and likes to have fun every once in a while. But is this what you're supposed to be crusading for or against? Or is it okay if your side's the one on offense? Or whose side is the cancer patient on? And how does he figure into this? I'm sorry that you fucking pieces of shit can't get to me. But I'm not going to quit anything and nobody can fire me. As I mentioned before, I don't have human emotions. I got a soft spot for family members, animals, and handicapped kids. And everybody else can fuck all the way off if they need to. I don't tell people to fuck off until they give me reason. But I don't give a fuck once they do. And I don't care what you say or think. So if you got to figure out some way that you want to fuck with, uh, with me by fucking with other people... That's pretty fucking sad. And our dramatic fucking accuser, the Shakespeare of the Lifetime Network up in Billings with his tale of sorrow and woe, doesn't do any good also for the people with the real stories to tell. Because when they hear this horse shit and it's heard to be horse shit, then people think everything's horse shit and then somebody's telling the truth and nobody believes them. And the people that hop on this shit because they want it to be true and then find out it's a bunch of shit... Well, they ain't helping either because then they'll be less likely to hop on something the next time when it happens to be the case. So, <clears throat> basically, in summation, on behalf of my lovely wife, 
the only thing that we're guilty of is both of us like to have fun every once in a while and cut promos on people when we're pissed off. And if that's not good enough for you, here's an idea. Blow me! Well, if I may say a thing or two here, I had a similar thought where there are so many women coming out in the last week with stories of rape, with stories that are really just awful. And then in the midst of that, this story came out about you and Stacy grooming people. Oh, shit. The, the, guy that, the guy that got 150 people contracts with major organizations held people back. Unless they, Jesus Christ, what was she doing? Three a day and fucking four on Sunday? Are you out of your fucking minds? Well, one of the thoughts I had is, uh, obviously, you are very vocal with your opinions about people and things. I've never heard this. I've <laughs> never heard one of the many, many, many people who you have destroyed who try to fight back at you. A lot of people realize that it's just, it's not worth it sometimes. <laughs> but a lot of people have fired back at you. A lot of, you said awful things about some people you don't like, and they try to say something back. No one has ever accused you of any of these things. This is the first I had heard of it. Well, yeah, do you think? But besides, and, and it just, where are we as a society that everybody's so ready, they're on one side or the other, they're so ready to believe this shit. I believe shit, and I've said it before. Everybody says, why are you saying the same thing about Trump? Oh, what the fuck? I believe the fucking New York Times. When this story gets on the cover of the New York Times, the Washington Post, you come back with me, I will have a very contrite statement. Otherwise, suck my fucking Peter. No pun intended. Uh, but it's fucking ridiculous that people jump onto this shit now, and the things that they're trying to rail against are exactly what they do when the worm turns and the shoe is on the other foot. But for fuck's sake, I, that's and 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 uh, the point of the the whole problem is, is that if you if you're gonna be such a fucking social justice warrior as they all say they are on the internet and they're supposed to be, then you do the exact things to the, the exact same things to the people you don't like as the people you don't like are doing to the people you do like. It's just okay because they're on the right side. It doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. Fucking idiots. And we actually have seen in the last several days, specifically a few of the people who have spoken out against you, who've had a problem with you, who talked about how the business is different now. They don't have a place for people who think like you and your mindset, and they've now been accused of everything from rape on down. So it's the same people who are trying to claim that they're cleaning things up, but may just be at times looking for Twitter points. Uh, for the record, have you as ever... I, oh, okay. I was about to say, as I, as I said, I'm not commenting on anybody else's business until they themselves, which a few in a roundabout way have, admit that they do it, but that's a story for another day. So you're saying unequivocally you never groomed <laughs> for a sexual relationship with you and your wife john cena or randy orton <laughs> brock lesnar Batista. oh that would have worked i couldn't keep them in the same fucking room with each other uh y yes and on and on you can go down the line and on yes that is the the categorical denial and yes. you're saying that you and your wife she has her fun and so do you and Sometimes our fun coincides. We have some fun friends, but many of them are not involved in the wrestling business and for obvious fucking reasons. And, and by the way, and once again, I appreciate, you know, becoming the modern version of fucking Ron Jeremy. I don't know what fucking male porn star today. So sue me Ron Jeremy or whatever, but my God, no, neither he, sh she, I You shouldn't use Ron Jeremy. He's been accused of stuff now too. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just saying, you know, what the fuck? Suddenly, no, it not only was none of it was that fucking glamorous or uh, quantitative or often or et cetera as well. But it, it, and here's the thing. Once again, when you get some of these childlike minds, and some of the most childlike minds around this outlaw wrestling scene around here are the people who think that they're brilliant, who don't understand that grown adults do have sexual relations with each other and sometimes more than one person before the age of 30 when they're able to find a mail-order bride. So 
it, 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 the naturally the the legend grows. Oh my God, they do this all the time, every night, and you should see it. And it's Babylon, and it's Oh my God, it looks like Caligula. <laughs> no, I, I mean you know because a lot of people are easily pleased. I'm you know, right. but anyway, Mr. Guccione. I mean, yes, that, that, the penthouse fate will be a letter to the forum, for fuck's sake. All right. How come I never got invited to one of these hot tub parties? Well, you never leave the fucking house up there. You're like me now. <laughs> and now that's out the window because of the fucking virus. Anyway, all right, here's the thing. Now that I've got cranked up about this and it, it talked about how completely repulsed I am by other people and just the fact that fuck all y'all fuck you to death until your life force leaves your body on behalf of my friend and my better half that you persecuted i'm not going to sit here and answer questions about the ding dongs i'm just not because i ain't in the mood for it so this is a special program that we have just done that's going to be the drive-through for monday june whatever the fuck and we will have a another separate program that will be our regular drive through within the next day or so, depending on editing schedules. Because I ain't fucking sitting here and talking cheerful. And, 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 and we can joke about this as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm involved, because it is a fucking joke. But I say again one more time, it's fucking ridiculous. Just stupid. Not only stupid on people's parts that they can fucking buy this shit and perpetrate this shit, gratifying on my part that I can engender this kind of legitimate despisal uh, from the um, uh, populace at large, but once again, completely despicable and repulsive and revolting that these people would want to drag a, a, my family or even a, a goddamn unrelated cancer patient and abuse and fucking uh, harass him just to get even with me. That's the fucking problem. And you're no better, as I said, and I'll say this again, you're no better than what you're trying to fucking prevent or stop in your little fucking feeble minds. So close this up, Brian, and we'll be back tomorrow or the next day. Well, as Jim just said, we will be back. In the next day or so, we will talk off air and figure out our recording schedule. Yeah, because I just I just decided that about two minutes ago. It's news as, to me. As Brian Lass could just testify to. That's right. But we will uh, post something on Twitter, and also we will get. And by the way, and by the way, for everybody, I shouldn't just fucking sit here and talking to my fans and just completely cuss other people and forget about them. For everybody who did write, of which there were so many, and say, "What the fuck?" and "Can you believe this bullshit?" and all of the other things, including some interesting tidbits on some people who may be behind this and may be discussed off air at a later date. But thank you for everybody who said nice things about me or Stacy. And I think Bobby Fulton should have some apologies coming his way on it. No, I don't even tweet Bobby Fulton. If any asshole that was involved in it wants to apologize now, send $5 to the American Cancer Society for being a shit to fucking Bobby Fulton, a 60-year-old cancer patient. Fuck you again. Make it $10. But anyway, but thank you to everybody else that was nice and human. Well, as you said earlier, we will be back with a special episode or a, a regular episode of the drive through with all the ding-dong questions and more in the next day or so. Stay tuned to the podcast feed. Stay tuned to Twitter. I will put up an announcement. But until then... For Jim Cornette, I'm the great Brian Last. Tally ho. <laughs>